In this video, I'd like to describe the binomial option pricing model. It's one of the basic pricing models, even though not really used much in real life. It offers some really good insights for a firm understanding of some of the most important concepts in quantitative finance. So if you understand this model well, it will make you feel a lot more comfortable if you are interested in advanced quantitative finance. First, think about the following problem. Given a stock and its current price $100, at the time of maturity, the stock can go to either $120 with 90% probability or $99 with 10% probability. Assuming risk-free rate is zero, how much would you pay for an other money call option with strike of $100? Naively, since the stock can go to $120 with 90% probability, it seems the option price should be the payoff of the option after hitting $120, which is $20, multiplied by the in the money probability, which is 90%. That would be $18. By paying $18 for the option, the profit of your investment is $2 with 90% probability. But of course, this 10% probability that you would lose the $18. So the question is, are you willing to pay $18 for the 90% probability of $2 profit with 10% probability of losing all of the $18 investment? Another question is, if I am the seller, do you think I would make this deal with you? Meaning, take the $18 and write you that option. For me, this 90% chance I will lose $2 and 10% chance of winning $18. The answer for me is absolutely I will. Because, and this is one of the key insights of derivative pricing, because the 90% and 10% above are not so-called risk-neutral probability. The option value derived from them creates an arbitrage opportunity and by cleverly constructing a portfolio, I can make money whether the stock ends up with $120 or $99 after selling you that option. To understand my argument, let's try to construct a simple portfolio. This is a simple case without any optimization through sophisticated math, just as an example. Imagine I write you a call option for one share for the underlying, but I also buy a share of the underlying so the call is completely covered. Now let's see what the payoff would be for this portfolio. Scenario 1. The stock goes to $120 which, according to you, has 90% probability. In this case, option matures in the money, and I need to sell you one, uh, one share at $100, the strike price, which you can sell for $120 for the $20 difference and the $2 profit after you subtract the $18 cost. Well, for me, since I own a share of the underlying anyway, I'll just sell you that share without the need to buy one at $120. So, I just pocketed in the $18 you paid me. That's my profit, even though the stock went up and the option I wrote is in the money. You make $2, while I make $18. To write down the math of my portfolio, the portfolio was long one share underlying and short one option. At the beginning, it's worth $82, while at the end, it's worth $100, and I make $18. Now, let's see the other scenario when the stock goes to $99. The option matures out of the money, and it becomes worthless. You lose $18 premium you paid me for the option, while for me, I made $18 from the option, 
but I lost one dollar from the underlying that I long. So in total, I still made seventeen dollars. Now you see, with the with this portfolio, regardless of the ending price of the stock, I make money either way. The question is if I make eighteen dollars or seventeen dollars. That's a great arbitrage opportunity for me, the seller or the writer of the call option. While you, on the other hand, either make two dollars or do lose eighteen dollars. You may have guessed. One way to determine the fair price of the option is to make sure the writer of the option, me in this case, doesn't get such an outrageous arbitrage opportunity. Let's follow this line of thinking using the same approach of portfolio construction to see if we can find such a fair price with a neutral risk. We are going to assume the option's value is V, an unknown variable. And instead of longing one share of the underlying, we are going to long n shares of underlying, another unknown variable. Our task is to find such V and N that the value of the portfolio simply doesn't change, regardless of the ending price of the stock. For convenience, we are going to assume the stock can go up to U times S0 or go down to D times S0. In our specific case above, U would be 1.2, while D 0.99. The beginning value of the portfolio is n times s0 minus v. When the stock goes up to u times s0, the portfolio's value is n times u s0 minus u s0 minus s0, since the option matures in the money and the payoff is s minus k, and k is s0, s is u s0 for the uh, other money option. When the stock goes down to D times S0, the portfolio's value is just N times DS0, with option value goes to 0 since it's out of the money. Now the math here is quite simple, since everything is linear. We set the two ending portfolio values to be equal, and get the N shares to be U minus 1 divided by U minus D. Then, making the beginning portfolio value equal the ending portfolio value. We get the option value V is n times 1 minus D S0. With V and N determined, we have arrived at the portfolio that doesn't change value regardless of the final stock price. Whether it went up to U S0 or down to D S0, and you shouldn't pay more than V for your option, otherwise you are giving me an arbitrage opportunity. While I shouldn't charge you less than V, otherwise there's a higher chance for me to lose money than making money. You may have come across another derivation of the option value, with the so-called risk-neutral probability that makes the underlying a martingale. The principle is fundamentally the same, but it's another mathematical form, and you may need to get your head around it to appreciate it. The idea is that the expected value of the underlying shouldn't change. Since we know the two possible outcomes of the final price, we can use this constraint to derive a probability of the stock going up and down, such that the constraint is met. Since the expected value stays the same with this probability, we will call it risk-neutral probability. Assuming in this risk-neutral probability space, the stock goes up to U S0 with probability P, while down with 1 minus P. We can write down the expected value as the sum of P times U S0 and 1 minus P times D S0 and make it the same as the beginning price S0. Solving this leads to 1 minus D divided by U minus D, and this is the risk-neutral probability of stock going up to U S0.
Now, with this probability, we can evaluate the option price as the expected payoff, which is the payoff multiplied by the in the money probability, which is P. Plug it in, we arrive at a V equal 1 minus D divided by U minus D times U minus 1, etc., which is exactly the same as we as what we got above through the portfolio construction method. So that's pretty neat. Okay, this is one of the more sophisticated videos I've made, but hopefully you find it helpful. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.